thanks for taking the time to watch this week's Old Town Short. There's nothing there. Have you ever woken up during the night because you thought you heard something? Maybe downstairs or out in the hall or coming from your closet? It's something that many people experience, isn't it? I remember when my kids were very young. We had a routine at bedtime. After we read a story, or two or three, depending on the night, we'd say our prayers together, and then we'd walk around the room and look. Nothing in the closet, nothing under the bed, nothing behind the bureau. There's nothing here. Then my kids could go to sleep knowing that all was well. Well, that's the Easter message, isn't it? There's nothing here. Do not be afraid, for all is well. But unfortunately, we tend to live our lives looking for the problems. We're afraid of what might be in the closet, or under the bed, or behind the bureau, because that's our human story. It's the story of life lived in the fear of darkness and death. We look for the problems that might be out there. We fear for ourselves and we fear for our loved ones. We sense that something is out there lurking just around the corner, just out of our sight. Something more powerful than ourselves. And my friends, you know what? We're right. But it's definitely not what you think. There's a story about three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they go to see the tomb. They know something is there. They saw it happen. They watched the crucifixion. They saw Jesus die. They saw Joseph take Jesus' body, wrap it in cloth, and put it in the tomb and they saw a great stone rolled in front of the opening. So on that first day of the week, as they approach the tomb, they know what to expect. They know that just around the corner, they'll find death, fear, pain, loss, sorrow. They know that in the tomb, they'll find the body of their friend, Jesus which they've come to anoint with spices and precious oils. But here's the good news, my friends. Something was there, but it was not what they expected. Because a new day and a new sunrise signaled the dawn of a new creation, one in which death no longer rules. God, not death, will have the first the final, and every word in between. Do not be afraid, the angel announces. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. My friends, this Easter story is the church's story. It's the same old story told year after year, just occasionally from a different translation or a different gospel. While some of you have heard this story only a few times, others have heard it 70, 80, maybe 90 times. But here's the important part. The story itself never changes. Instead, the story changes us. Did you hear that? The story itself never changes. Instead, the story changes us. Each year, we gather to hear the Easter story for only one reason, so we can leave. Now, I don't mean that we can leave and go have dinner with our families, but so that we can leave the darkness and tombs of our lives and live. We want to be reminded, there's nothing here. Don't be afraid. All is well. But the problem is, too often we think resurrection is about what happens after we die. We limit resurrection 
to nothing more than a promise of life after death. But the truth is, my friends, the power and the gift of resurrection is not so much what happens after we die, but right here, right now, today. There's a liturgical term for the 50 days after the resurrection. The 50 days between Easter and Pentecost, and it's called the Great 50 Days. It was during those 50 days that Jesus appeared several times to his disciples, assuring them, encouraging them, and inspiring them to not live in fear, but to continue doing what he taught them to continue teaching and healing, to do justice and to love kindness, to humbly show compassion and to lift up the least and the lost. During the great 50 days, we are not called to look with fear into the dark and empty places for what might be there or for the problems that we might face but on the contrary, we're called to celebrate the promise and the hope and the possibility that the empty tomb brings. Each week during the great 50 days, we continue to shout Alleluia and to celebrate the good news of the resurrection as we do our best to be the church in our broken and hurting world. My friends, the joy of Easter is not only that the tomb is empty and that Christ is risen. No, Easter joy is about the hope, the possibility, and the promise that regardless of the problems and the worries and the fears that we carry, brings new life to each one of us here and now. What matters most about Easter is not the empty tomb as much as what we decide to do because of the empty tomb. It's what we choose to do later today, tomorrow, the day after that, and the day after that. How will we now live differently? Jesus did not die and rise again so that we might come to church, shout Alleluia, and then continue life as usual. Folks, if this new life and freedom does not change us, we might as well put the stone back over the entrance of the tomb. If we leave here today and don't think about Easter again until next year, then we have entirely missed the gift. Our lives are the evidence of resurrection. We are no longer prisoners to the power of fear and sin and darkness and death. We don't have to worry about how all of this is going to turn out. Friends, life is eternal and love is immortal. We are free to live, and we are free to love. Because the end of the resurrection story is the beginning of our life. This year, during the great 50 days here in Old Town, we'll be continuing that celebration. Because for the next six weeks, our varied ministries will be leading worship each in their own way sharing their stories and their faith as we all celebrate our call to be the church. This is not a time to worry or to look for problems, but on the contrary, it's a time to look for the gifts within each other and the possibilities that lie around each corner. While our ministries lead worship, because of the generosity of our church, I will be taking a 50-day sabbatical to rest and renew my mind, body, and spirit, so that as the season of Pentecost arrives, I might be able to see with fresh eyes 
even more of the promise and possibilities that lie ahead for our church family. My friends, during this time, do not be afraid. Remember that you do not walk the journey alone. You've got this, for the tomb is empty. There's nothing to worry about. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. So let us all shout Alleluia as we live and love and truly celebrate being the church.